Hi guys, it's Minx here, and welcome to my 2015 Top 10 Games. I know it's 2016 now when you're watching this, or at least it should be for most of you. And um, here are my Top 10 Games from the previous year. Hope you enjoy the countdown! Number 10. Fatal Frame 5 is the latest instalment in one of my fave franchises of all time. It was the first series I ever properly let's played on YouTube, and it means a lot to me on various levels. For those not familiar with the franchise, the series involves you photographing ghosts with a magical camera to exercise them. And in this new instalment, you use the Wii U gamepad as the camera itself to battle the undead in a suicide forest in Japan. It may not be perfect, but it makes this list for tweaking my old school survival horror nostalgia. It was my favourite Wii U game this year, and definitely one you should check out if you're a fan of the horror genre. Number 9. Mad Max is a title that makes this list as a guilty pleasure. I love the new movie, I love the old movies. I love open world games, and this is very much open world game, the open world game. Mad Max is a surefire hit with me, purely because of this. The game is marred by being a bit simple, and it's full of mindless, grindy type side quests and collect this and collect that type stuff. But in general, it does capture the feel of the Mad Max world a lot. It's so exciting to race across the dunes, battle in your buggy, it's actually fun to play as Max as well, and punch goons in the face. It captures the feel of the world in the movies really well, and in general, it's just a lot of fun to play, if not perfect. Number 8. Assassin's Creed Syndicate for me is a return to form into the series. A lot of great missions, fantastic characters, including Evie Fry, who is probably my favourite character of the entire year. She's the new female lead that you play in the game. And as someone who loves and used to live in London, it was great to see my, like, I guess my old home city and my, my home country realised in the game. Uh, battling the Templars and doing the various side quests just all feel really polished, fun and exciting. Every mission comes up with something new. The collectibles and repeatable stuff don't feel too boring. It's just great. It's just a really fun, exciting game. If you gave up on the franchise due to Unity, this is really is a breath of fresh air in my opinion, and I recommend it wholeheartedly. If you passed on it because of the previous games, you should check this one out. It's really fucking great. Number 7. Tormentum was a random point and click game I picked up purely as a quick game to let's play on the channel, but it turned into something a lot more. It's a creepy, HR Geiger inspired point and click with some incredibly dark and meaningful decisions to be made. It has amazing artwork, as you can see on screen here, and it just immerses you wonderfully in its really dark, fucked up, warped world. I can't really say more than this without spoiling because it's quite a short game, but it is a great indie point and click. In fact, one of the best point and clicks I've ever played, and you should totally check it out. That's Tormentum. At number six, we have Lucius 2. It's a buggy, yet insanely fun sandbox of destruction. I love being a child of Satan personally, and this game, let me take the chaos and destruction of the first Lucius up a whole new level. It is immensely satisfying to murder people in a mix of ways, from electrocution to poison to you blowing them up. You can like make a trail of gasoline, light the match and watch the room burn as people scream. You can even possess other people, make them pick up an axe and then get them to dismember their friends. It is incredibly satisfying. This game was overlooked a lot and it is buggy and it, especially when I played it, it did feel incomplete. I'm not sure how it is now, but it is a lot of fun. And I really recommend it, especially if you can overcome the bugginess. It's a fantastically fun game, and some of the most fun I had this year playing a game in general. So check it out. At number five, we have the only multiplayer entry on the list. This is Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. It's a simple premise, and I'm sure most of you guys know. Your friends read a bomb manual online and describe to you how to defuse the on-screen bomb, which may have lots of different mechanics to it. As you advance in the game, the mechanics get more complicated, and combining that with like tight timers and the chance it can blow up in one hit, it makes for an incredibly intense game with you and your friends just screaming at each other as you try to communicate with them what the bomb they can't see. It's really a recipe for amazing fun, and it's the only multiplayer game on this list, so I think that speaks volumes for how good it is as a multiplayer project. So, um, keep talking and nobody explodes. That comes in at number five. Frambo is the highest ranked indie title on the list. And that's ranked in at number four. In a year, I feel Indies were a bit more buried in the wake of AAA titles than previous years. Fran does stand out. Um, you join Fran in the wild and twisted point-and-click adventure through a dark fantasy world. I seem to like my dark fantasy worlds. 
Fran needs to find out who killed her parents, and with the help of her talking cat, Mr. Midnight, she goes through various horror and some fantasy landscapes, trying to piece together what's happened and experiencing lots of weird and dark quests. The game has so much imagination, it has beautiful art, and the puzzles in it are genuinely varied and quite complicated at times, without being really, really crazy. They tend to make a certain degree of sense, which I feel is a, a good standout thing in a point-and-click adventure game. So, Frambo, the highest ranked indie on the list, and a really, really good one that you should check out. At number three, we have Until Dawn. It's your chance to be in a horror movie. It's everything Telltale Games wishes they'd done this year, and more, in my opinion. It has a great cast, it creates genuine fear, the intensity you feel as you're performing the quick time events, as you're interacting with the world, it's pretty much unmatched this year. Um, it has some incredibly interesting branching paths, which means there's added reasons to replay the game if you wish to, and it's just fantastic. I mean, it came out of nowhere and managed to be this amazing horror, this horror movie experience that you've never really experienced before in the gaming sp spectrum. I really hope for more interactive horror in different settings to like continue this franchise along. I'd like to see an Until Dawn in like um, a Texas Chainsaw Massacre sort of setting or things like that. It's, it's really fucking awesome and you should totally check it out, especially if you're a fan of horror. Until Dawn is my position three. Moving into the top two now, Life is Strange takes a second slot. Life is Strange is beautiful. The way it makes you feel, the art, the music, the characters, it's a game that really draws you in and never lets you go till the final moments. Max Caulfield finds she has the ability to rewind time and is thrown into an amazing world of consequences, emotions, depth and impact that you don't feel in many other games. Again, I feel Telltale's games this year were so lacking and this is the genre they created and Life is Strange and Until Dawn both do it so much better than Telltale have managed to do this year. It's just superb Life is Strange. It, it isn't to be missed and it's one of the games whose characters will stay with me for a long, long time. Max and Chloe, I just love them. They're just fucking amazing, and it's fantastic. But it misses out on the top spot to a game that doesn't have a huge amount of characterization. What's number one? Number one is Bloodborne. Bloodborne is the best horror game this year, and the best action game this year, and the best game this year. It's a brittle Dark Souls difficulty jaunt through a world of much faster paced combat, Lovecraftian monsters and nightmares lurking in the corners of all its dark but stunningly beautiful environments. You go through epic gothic cathedrals, nightmare torn landscapes, it's just everything is just dark and twisted and oh it's just amazing. I'm, I'm getting goose pimples thinking about how fucking awesome Bloodborne is. I was gripped when I battled Rom in awe as I beat monsters like Murgo's Wet Nurse, and the fights in general are just breathtaking. Bloodborne is a nightmare everyone should play, and one you won't ever want to wake up from. And it makes my game of the year 2015. Hope you'll join me for next year's installment, guys. Let's see what 2016 has to hold, and hopefully there'll be some standout and surprising titles over the next 12 months. I'll see you really fucking soon, guys. Hope you enjoyed this countdown. Bye for now.